The world has been remade in my father's image. Darling, it seems Daddy didn't tell you the most important rule of bringing on the apocalypse. If you want to finish the job, the thing you have to do first is get rid of all the witches. Big mistake. Hey guys, Ryan and Greg here, and we're breaking down another episode of American Horror Story Apocalypse. It's a sad day here because the season oh. is over, but the good news is the apocalypse never happened. And don't worry, because we got you covered for all your AHS coverage, including comic deep dives, TV breakdowns, and movie reviews. And this will not be the last Apocalypse video. I think next week we're going to do a complete season review and recap the best and worst things that we liked, mm -hmm. what worked, what didn't work, and what questions we still have. So stay tuned for that next week. It's a lot of them. All right, Greg, some overall thoughts of Apocalypse then. How did it wrap up the season for you? I didn't hate it. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, now, that hit and run. Are you upset? But let me tell you why. The trolling us. We just talked about it for weeks, like, oh, I hope they don't do the whole Seriously. Avada Kedavra, I, nothing like that, and they sure did not. They yeah. were happy with, okay, in the writing room, all right, what if she just, like, hits him with a car, and then she just backs up, and then boards again, and it's over from there, and I, I bet they got a, just a huge thrill out of that, yeah. and um, overall, looking at that scene again, the way Mallory looks at uh, Constance, <laughs> the whole thing, they're just trolling us. I loved it. But Greg, don't you think that she should check the body before driving off? Yeah, I, I like, mean, come on. Let's it, make sure he's dead. This is for the- Horror film 101 yeah. or anything like that. You gotta check. Double check the body. Yeah, I totally agree with you though. Uh, I think it was a nice way to wrap up the season, mm -hmm. but the hit and run was just like, I was, <laughs> I laughed out loud instead of, and I was waiting for this epic battle between Mallory and Michael, like, you know, their first meeting with each other and it was fire, literal fire and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And now it's just a hit and run. I was just like, Seriously? That's how we're gonna kill the Antichrist? Now, before we get into the breakdown, let's give a shout out to Barbara, who tweeted me with this right here. Her prediction for the AHS finale was a lot of back and forth through time, the Mallory versus Michael showdown, and a cliffhanger ending. At this point, I don't think they can wrap it all up without it feeling rushed. Well, did it feel rushed to you? It kind of, it I was think like the pacing, in between. Yeah, I think the pacing was, it was much, like, the previous two episodes were very slow. Mm -hmm. And we knew that they had to pack a ton into this, this last episode. It did not stop, it was just like, but it was, you wanted to see this. You know, those, those were all welcome additions. You wanted stuff to happen. Um, we, got, we got away from some of the flashbacks. You know, it started in flashbacks, but then we got to present time. Um, they replayed a little bit of their, that encounter between Michael and the witches Didn't, in Outpost 3. I don't know if you needed that, because it felt like- We already the, saw it. Yeah, the editor yeah. was like, all right, let me just re, let's put this back in here and keep yeah, going. Yeah, that was a little bit of wasted time right there. Yeah. But, but overall, um, Barbara, your prediction's pretty spot on. I mean, we all kind of saw this coming, you know, the time travel. Um, I guess we all just wish that the showdown between Michael and Mallory was a little bit more epic than just, you know, Michael not looking both sides before he crosses the street. <laughs> well, how else could they do this though? What, what else could they do here other than, again, the Avada Kedavra or anything like that? There was no other way. You're right, you're right. It, it would have been it would have been pretty lame to just see them, you know, back, you know, with their powers back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, it would have been interesting to kind of, if she would have went back even further in time. Like before he was conceived, before uh -oh. he was even con conceived. Oh, and stops the Harmons from getting into the house, maybe? Something she... like that, yeah. Stops, okay. like more of a, a deeper murder house connection, go back some time. Oof. Don't we, why, why even wait until he's alive if you want to kill the Antichrist? Because like, they wanted to retcon this season, but not murder house, the first season. Right, right. So right. No, you gotta, I, I, yeah, that's why. Just, yeah, <laughs> then a whole bunch of stuff changes if you have to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's break it down now. We start off at Canaros Robotics again. Mm -hmm. Flashback, yep. uh, back with Mutt and Jeff one last time, and they're paid a visit from our good old Myrtle. Yeah, I actually like this. I didn't mind this background. I, you know, we wanted, we needed flashbacks that gave us a lot of payoff, and like, it was cool to see that Myrtle stopped by and totally just, we figured out how kind of they, the placement of all the, the outposts. Outpost, yeah. You know, seeing that outpost, they were gonna go to outpost two, it was gonna be in Virginia. Outpost three was the Hawthorne School in California. Uh -huh. And then, you know, how she just was a total badass walking in that building, right? With God. Venable, and she just like snaps, Venable's like frozen. And then when she just like totally just goes in that room and just tells them, I, those, I, I hate those two, by the way. I mean, when she just tells them what exactly they're gonna do, and then, I guess it left it off at that that they died. He, they, she killed them. I don't or know. She walked Actually, out. Um, she walked out. She says, I'm gonna have to kill you. I suppose I must get to the most unpleasant part of my visit. 
What's that? The part where I have to leave before killing you both. And then did they just die? Right I don't there? know if she, if she like snapped her finger and then all of a sudden they died, but Couldn't she left the room, or right? Like know. strangled them to death. Um, but that might be a reason why we never saw them again during the whole outpost. Timeline. Yes, because yes, it doesn't really make much sense for them to uh, end up as different characters like Gallant. Now, there's a cool little theory that maybe Jeff and Mutt are actually Gallant and probably Brock. Now, I'm all for that, only because <laughs> of the idea that maybe Mutt was getting a haircut and then he met uh, Coco right then and there, but they had their like, you know, whole memory wipe. But then it doesn't make any sense. Why did Brock just kill everyone at the end? Yeah, and like, why would their <laughs> memories? I don't know. I it I, falls I apart. Yeah, I don't see. Th I don't see them. The witches don't need to wipe their memories or give them an identity She could have killed them. Just, she could have just killed them. Yeah. It's easier to just kill those two and not like, although if she doesn't want to be like a cold-blooded killer, she could literally just change, like, you know, give them that identity spell and stop them from even creating these evil robots and all that kind of stuff. But um, we also learned um, about the identity spell, yes. you know, how it all works, stuff like that. Kind of a touching, sad moment, like, we're not going to remember you. It's like a copy and paste. You put someone else's <laughs> like, uh, memories in there. That was awesome when, when she said to Coco about um, giving, basing the personality off of Madison's personality. <laughs> Makes so much sense. Yeah. All the shade thrown, thrown at Madison in this episode is top-notch amazing. We've modeled your new personality after Madison. No. No, there must be another way. Consider it an upgrade. We'll talk about this more probably next week too, but Myrtle, uh, I don't know what this season would be without Frances Conroy because she's this was amazing. incredible. Yes, I totally agree with you. She's probably my favorite character this season and she, and, and just how, how she played. The um, lines. The li time. Yeah, yeah. So many great lines, obviously, how she, uh, the fashion that she pulls off, um, but just her presence in these big moments, it, it, it adds to like how epic and, and mm -hmm. how life and death it, um, each moment is, so I, I, I love what Conroy did this season. She literally snatched Michael's hair. My hair is an eternal mystery, never to be fully understood. Finally, one last thing on the outpost. Uh, so, so we got outpost three and everything, but Michael brought up the sanctuary early on yeah. in the season. Uh, was that just bullshit? I think it was complete bullshit. I, think, I don't think that he ever intended to bring anyone out of that place. Um, he wanted, well actually, he, no, he probably wanted people to be like, servants of his and he wanted to see who was who would kind of follow his follow his lead as Mead kind of he followed Meads in the beginning um, I, I don't think that he was ever going to bring anyone or save anyone that wasn't going to then you know call him the, his call him their his, king he wanted his followers and maybe there was some sanctuary but we don't need to know where that was because it's not going to happen yeah now. I don't think it was important unless you, th you think that there was something underneath underneath the murder house that could have been or underneath Mm -hmm. Hotel Cortez, some, you know, really dark, Could just um, been hell. demonic hell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or just bring them straight to hell. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't think there was any, I think that promise was just literally to get everyone against each other. All right, I buy that. All right, now let's fast forward to a few years after the bombs dropped, after the apocalypse. Um, we see the Coven Witches um, took a little nap underneath the ground. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't know what's going on there exactly, but they apparently a spell was cast over the ground or something where they just had to be a below. spell. Had to be a spell, right? Because yeah. you think that the nukes would just completely blow people up, and even if you're a witch, you're gonna die. I mean, we see witches die from from bombs, from bullets, from mm -hmm. snapping their necks. So it, you, you have to like just go there's with some it. protection, yeah. and that they were sleeping, basically hibernating until it was safe to come out again. <sighs> And finally, we're back in present time. No more flashbacks. Uh, it took, I think, 20 minutes. I, I logged, I was waiting, like, okay, when are they gonna get back to present day or present apocalypse yeah. timeline? Yeah. And I paused, it was like 17 minutes or close to like 20 minutes before they finally got there. Whatever. I'm yeah, happy we, saw, back. we saw the start of this earlier in the season and they kind of yeah. left us on a cliffhanger. And now we get to see how it all plays out. Um, very cool moment. I was just wondering why Michael. You know, he talks about, like, I can just kill you in a matter of seconds, but, like... He doesn't. He doesn't. He's just like, like, bro, like, you're the worst villain. If you want to take over the world and you want to get rid of all the enemies that you have, you just kill them immediately right there. You don't provoke them. You don't do anything. Like, they're going to have some sort of plan to overthrow you. Like, if he wanted to succeed in this, he would have just killed them. He's a kid. And he, yes. he's very, like, needy, right? He wants some people to... He wants the support of others, and he wants them to follow him he wants to make them servants of his so um yeah i was just he's, he's just like a horrible he's just like really bad at being evil she needed the help 
of a powerful voodoo queen. <laughs> but that ain't you, sis. Now that's out of the way. Uh, shout out to everyone who called it at home about this cameo. Marie Laveau shows up. And from the moment she shows up, I think the 15 minutes afterwards are probably my favorite. Yeah, I agree with you, totally. <laughs> of the entire episode and maybe the season just in general for how uh, campy, um, just it's all over the place. And it's just like it's pure chaos and I loved it. It does not let off the gas at all this whole time. Um, yeah, you know, we, we saw in the preview <laughs> last week um, you know, Marie Laveau's arm in that shot talking to uh, Michael Langdon. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew, we, we had a good idea this was coming. And um, it was cool to see, we knew that Cordelia would make some sort of deal with Papa Legba. Like, we knew he wasn't, uh, that, was, that, that, was up, key, you know. that was key to something here. And I guess that's the way that they killed Dina, right? Is, is just bring in more powerful voodoo queen back and get, do the little swap for mm -hmm. um, who belongs in hell and who doesn't. So and what um, was she doing in hell, by the way? She was torturing. <laughs> which is pretty awesome. She was torturing <laughs> Delphine LaLaurie, who deserves to be tortured for the rest of eternity. Um, but this was an awesome, awesome way to kind of bring back one of the, our most popular and, and, and a really lovable character that Angela we love. Angela Bassett. We, yeah. Thank you. Cordelia promised Papa Legba <laughs> the darkest and most corrupt voodoo queen soul for mine. You serve him well in my place. Again, it gets really campy from there. You got Dina with the blood spatter, and yeah. then you got uh, Miss Mead, um, uh, should I say Rosie the Robot, exploding. Uh, that Cord whole thing yeah. was incredible. Cordelia just like <laughs> immediately just blows her up. Like that couldn't, the whole, why, didn't that, uh, why didn't that happen earlier? Like how, <laughs> how easy was it for Cordelia just to kill her? Back in New Orleans, they could have did that. Um, yeah, totally. There and you, um, you know, Mead was, um, and I love the touch of Miss Mead singing Daisy Bell, yeah. by, uh, Bicycle Built for Two, yeah. which we saw at the end of Space Odyssey, 2001 Space Odyssey, uh -huh. um, when Hal is deactivated. Um, that was a really cool touch, uh, you know, a robot, you know, the end of the robot's like life right there. Daisy. Daisy. Give me your land, sir. And then you got the Ash callback to Alien uh, with the whole white blood. It was like and spot on, yeah. yeah. Same thing, same shot. Perfect organism. It's structural perfection is matched only by its hostility. And then Madison jumps up and goes all Scarface on Michael Langdon, grabs Mead's <laughs> arm yeah. gun, and just literally goes all Scarface on Langdon, who. Um, I was like, wow, is that how he's gonna die? No, he's just like sleeping kinda. Mm -hmm. Like the bullets just kind of knock him out. He's gonna get up, yeah, I, I loved it. It's kinda like he's like Wolverine and like he gets like slowed down, but then like he'll just like regenerate. And it doesn't end there. And then all of a sudden, wait, where's Brock? Oh, there's Brock, he shows up and stabs Mallory. I loved it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is great. I, chaos, I don't know where they're going. I'm like, so, maybe I'm, kill off Mallory here here, and then let somebody else go back in time. Make a twist here. I, that's where I thought we were going. So apparently Brock, um, I, Brock must have not eaten the apple. No. No, no. He was just hanging out in like the closet, like, like what the hell's going on out there? And he just like, comes out and just yeah. like, gets revenge and just stabs anyone who sees. He was like sees. looking, saw everyone, you know, throwing up. <laughs> All because he wanted to catch a ride on that plane, on that damn plane. It's Dude does not let go of things, right? It's secretly mutt. He came back. He remembered everything. Then we get Myrtle setting Brock on fire, RIP Brock at this point. And then Michael goes on this like Thanos, the end of Infinity War, where yeah. he's like slowly just going one by one and taking them out. Starts with, uh, I think, Marie Laveau. This was a really cool, out. this is a really cool sequence. Like Laveau does that whole like Lord of the Rings thing, you, you shall not pass. You will not pass. You shall not pass his line and he's like, uh, I could definitely just break through and take your fucking heart out. <laughs> and then Coco stabs him and then they, he turns around, he pulls out her heart, eats it, but Coco had a chance right there to give us the line of the century about the calories, she didn't do it. Yeah, how many calories are in that heart? Let us know, Coco. Greg, we've seen Michael have a couple bites of heart throughout the season. Yes. But I, I don't know, do you, don't you think he'd prefer stew? Come on, man. All the stew is stew! So that leaves us with a showdown between Cordelia and Michael. We've been waiting for this for quite some time. Mm 
Um, and we called this. We knew that Cordelia had to sacrifice herself in order to help out and save the world and yeah. to give uh, Mallory specifically the powers of becoming the Supreme. Remember, uh -huh. once the current Supreme dies, then the, the, ascending, the ascending Supreme, you know, gets all that life force. Um, <laughs> and Mallory's finally able to um, survive that stabbing attack, but uh -huh. also then, then try her um, time travel. From there, you're thinking, again, why didn't they do this sooner? Yes, uh, I agree. Cordelia could have killed herself at any moment, or someone could have just um, kind of killed her, you know, just sacrificed herself so that Mallory could get, all that, time. <laughs> get yeah. all that strength. <laughs> and you could have, like, saved, you could have saved, like, you could have shaved, like, three episodes off this season. One last time at the murder house. Uh, didn't think we were coming back here, but it's always great to come back there because I get more lines from Constance here. Now, Mallory, again, she could have just knocked on that door with a gun. <laughs> yeah. Very uh, creative use of how to uh, travel in time and then kill the Antichrist. So there's a falling out between uh, Michael, Michael and Constance. And Constance. Yeah. She kicks him out of the house. She's okay. like, had enough. And he doesn't look both ways when he crosses the street. All right. All right. He's a kid. He's a kid. Remember. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point. He is a kid. Michael mm -hmm. might look like he's a teenager but he's an infant inside there. He's only been alive for a few years. So um, he's not quite, I guess, you I'll know, smart that. enough. I'll go with that. There's a couple things to think about here, right? So you go back in time to a time when Michael Langdon wasn't his full, mm -hmm. powerful self, right? So you go back when he's a teenager or you go back when he's a baby or when he's before he's conceived. And they weren't going to go back to when he was a baby because they, they're they not going to film anything where Mallory runs over a child over and over again. Of course not, so, yeah. I would, you would not want to condone that, but... <laughs> Um, you know, going back to this time makes sense in order to kill an uh, Antichrist, someone who becomes very powerful. But at this moment, you know, he's just kind of your mm -hmm. yeah. teenage murderer, serial killer. Nice like, touch in the writing to make sure, okay, we got to get him choking Constance, something bad, right, right. before he leaves. Yeah. So there's no, like, redeemable qualities to this kid right before you got to run him over a few times. Yeah. Get him out of the picture. Also, what we learned here is that if you want to kill the Antichrist, you have to drive a Range Rover. A composed and luxurious ride with Range Rover capability delivered with impressive combined emissions of 64 grams per kilometer. The all-new 2016 Range Rover. F*** Satan. Now, Constance has an opportunity to yeah. bring Michael back into the house. Uh, he begs her. Yeah. And all I could think of right then and there, I know I'm not the only one who thought this too, was The Good Son yes. with Macaulay Culkin. Come on, everyone, immediately you're thinking, Mom, come on, Mom, save me, Mom. Mom! So Constance says, you know what, I'm going to catch you on the flip side, young yeah. man. Yeah, you're going, you're going straight to hell, bro. <laughs> uh, bye, because yeah. she has plans probably to use that house for herself at some point. Yeah, I, I, I like how this um, closely mirrored um, Addie. Addie's, Addie's death mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in Murder House. She had an opportunity to save him, but she knows how evil he is and that he's not her grandson. Mm -hmm. He's not. He is some sort of evil of a different realm and that he, she, <laughs> he cannot, by any circumstances, be able to live on an eternity in that house. Okay, let's talk about the time travel now. Uh, the time travel logic here is- Pretty confusing. A, it's a little all over the place. You got a little bit of Days of Futures Past, you got a little bit of Back to the Future, um, and also you got like Jumanji time travel because uh, she stays there, just like the kids in Jumanji. Right, 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 uh, right. She stays in that timeline, but she knows everything. She's the only constant going on here, but- Yeah, she's back in the past, but she should have just stayed in the after bathtub. The first time, yeah, the first attempt, she disappeared. Uh, this time around, uh, no, she's she's I'm gonna there hang forever. Out. Uh, I'm gonna hang out back here. She is the supreme now, so maybe she's got some new powers added on here. But there's no explanation for how this works. Time yeah. travel in AHS is all over the place. Not at all. You you think that she would just then disappear and go back to her current timeline? Mm -hmm. But she's in the past, and she goes back to the academy, and you know they don't. No one recognizes her and knows what kind of what went on. And she makes a decision not to tell anyone the truth of what happened. Um, so, you know, she has this kind of knowledge of what just what she went through, what the mm -hmm. whole coven went through, what how close to the earth being completely destroyed um, went through. Now, my question here is, she goes back to the academy and Cordelia is the supreme, but she is the supreme in the back. She's, she went through this whole, you know, journey to become the supreme. So, like, 
who the hell is the Supreme? Yeah, what, what's going on with Cordelia's powers? Is she like, uh, right. are they gonna touch hands and immediately something bad's gonna happen? What, what's going on? Right, I did like the touch though that like, so Myrtle Snow was never resurrected. Um, she's <laughs> oh. still, um, rest in peace Myrtle Snow. Um, you know, she's never, she's, she was never brought back. She, they didn't need her help. Um, I like that Queenie was still alive. Queenie was in the Academy and she was planning her trip. This is the a fun hotel. little tie-in with Hotel, with, with Hotel Cortez. And Mallory gives her the heads up, like, don't go to that hotel, check the reviews, you know, go book a hotel down by the beach. It's a much better experience. LA traffic sucks, ask Brock. She could just tell her right then and there, hey, it's the portal to hell. Right. Don't go there. Just, I don't care about traffic, because yeah. something, anything could happen there. I think, they were just trying to be, I think they were just trying to be cute with it and not like just Jumanji. Give a, yeah, not give a full on um, reference to it. But we know that she's definitely referencing Hotel Cortez there. That was cool. Um, I liked how they said that Madison is still in hell and they're <laughs> going to let her just, let her just sit, let their sit oh. there. It, it's pretty funny that Mallory's like, nah, you know, I'm gonna let her just hang out there for a little bit. Uh, let's talk about Nan for a second because I, I love that little exchange they had there. Apparently yeah. her and Papa, they're really good friends at this point. BFFs, yeah. They, <laughs> she's like, nah, I, I like my gig down there. Peace out, see you guys later. But uh, uh, apparently she can come and go as she pleases. I don't, I don't know how that maybe? works. Maybe, yeah, uh, whatever. I'm fine with that logic. Where are you going? Back to Papa? I like it down there. Papa loves you play. I, I don't understand. Yeah, it's supposed to. She said, thank you. So let's fast forward to 2020 in this fixed timeline. Um, mm -hmm. We run into Tim. Uh, who are they? And Emily. Oh, those yeah. Those two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Remember those two with the special DNA? <laughs> well, they're back. It comes back around. Yeah, apparently. and that special DNA definitely meant something. Um, apparently, Satan had kind of like used plan. them as a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. That, it, you know, if Michael Langdon didn't work out, that he wanted these two together to be his kind of Adam and Eve for hell. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that this is gonna keep going. This is gonna continue. Yeah. It's a cycle. Never ending. So it's never ending here. That good so. and evil are always gonna fight. Yes. That Satan's never gonna give up. Mm -hmm. And the forces of heaven and hell will always be at war. This does not mean that there's going to be another season. There is no to be continued, and no. I think that's it. This is this is bookend now. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it just basically means that, like we said, it just keeps on going and going, mm -hmm. and that there needs to be the witches that can time travel and, and change, kind of stop the prophecy prophecy from occurring, stop Satan from pulling off this... Yes. Master trick. Now the whole thing about Timothy and Emily coming back for another season and to explain their whole DNA, sure, they can do that, but that doesn't really mean that there's gonna be any kind of sequel to this season. They can come back to that in yeah, another way. Yeah, I, I think it would be a waste, because I think it would be the same, it'd be the same, uh, the same, same story. story. It's yeah. the same story. It's, I mean, we really don't need to know the back, the context or background on Timoth and Timothy and Emily. We just know that. All we know is that that Satan Mallory's going to be there use to try them to as fight a vessel. Again. Yeah, That's and it. Satan used them as a vessel, and Satan could choose any two other people to use as a vessel to bring back his spawn and try to end the world. Yeah. So it's just an ongoing cycle, like you said, and hopefully good wins yeah. in the end. Doesn't mean they're aliens. Uh, it doesn't mean they're kits, kids. Yeah, uh, I think people online are kind of overreacting to like, well, who are they? Who are they? It's just it's just two random people with that were pit, that were picked that have. Yeah. You know, the nod to the special DNA was cool to see that, that they were kind of chosen um, by some higher power, Satan in this case. Um, but man, had it, if he wasn't carrying a coffee, none of this would have happened. Why do you have to carry that coffee? No, no, no. Destiny with Satan's powers. Yeah. It's gonna happen no matter what, apparently. True. That's what we got here. They're going to meet up no matter what. Whatever happens to the timeline, they're going to meet up. And I really enjoyed at the very end here, the, um, the shot of uh, their son, same shot over a the nanny. Very shot, similar shot to what we saw at the end of Murder House with Michael Langdon. Mm -hmm. um, nice throwback. Um, and it, it wrapped up really nicely at the end here. Besides the hit and run that we saw earlier, everything else wrapped up pretty nice in, in, in terms of like the callbacks that they gave to previous seasons and, and, and this new kind of timeline. We've been waiting our whole lives for this. We're here to help. Okay, let's jump into favorite moments. Ryan, what was yours? I think we referenced this earlier that you, you enjoyed a lot, was, was kind of that, that spree that Michael Langdon went on. That T-1000, that Thanos spree that he just started killing, snatching hearts, snapping necks, <laughs> and then uh, it all came to, a, came to a head with Cordelia and him facing off. Mm -hmm. And the line that she gave was just perfect and epic. Satan has one son. But my sisters are legion, motherfucker. <laughs>
I also really enjoyed Myrtle in this episode in the entire season, but the beginning with this set the tone with Myrtle going into Canero's robotics and just like basically just handling all of them and just teaching them what, what's up. Oh, man. That, I, I really enjoyed that part. So what, what about you? What, what was your favorite? Uh, mine's gotta be everything again uh, just like you i loved everything from that moment when uh, marie laveau comes back all yes. the way to the killing spree yeah um but one moment in particular where i knew that this was going to be very campy and it was going the way i wanted it to go was the miss mead explosion yes. <laughs> i had to go with that <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up with some final questions, some unanswered questions mm -hmm. and thoughts that we have on the season. Um, number one, before this episode, we had thought that the Antichrist was conceived with a human and a spirit, from yes. what we heard back, Billy Dean Howard said, I believe, uh -huh. back in Murder House. Uh -huh. um, Doesn't mean anything, apparently, or there's still some spirit thing going on with one of the two kids, I don't know. Yeah, I think so one of the options was that, one of, uh. that those kids aren't who we think they are, that there's some sort of special the DNA is literally special that they're not of human. They're from another realm, they're alien, they're a spirit. Um, but the other thing I think, um, you know, from what Billy Dean Howard said back in Murder House was that the devil, Satan, kind of got a little more bang for his buck. Yeah. So he kind of, you know, he, he wanted, in this instance, he wanted to bring his spawn through a ghost and a human, but not necessarily has to be that way. That like, the, the iteration of this antichrist that is Michael Langdon is kind of like, the perfect storm for him, but that it could also happen with humans. If the devil's going to use a human womb for his spawn, he's gonna want a little more bang for his buck. Okay, I buy that, only because, again, it's Satan's work here. This right. is all, we don't know what he's doing, but we know that Satan's involved. Yes, yeah. you think that Satan- came back later on the end of episode. Yeah, exactly, and you think that uh, Satan could, he could basically choose any two people to put this, to make this happen, right? He could- yeah. It doesn't have to be just a spirit and just a human. He could be like, hey, you and you, you're gonna make my spawn. It's gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, <laughs> like, he has that power to control that. So um, I think that Michael Langdon and how he was conceived, that was like the ultimate weapon or vessel, mm -hmm. but that it could also occur in, in just regular human beings that he chooses. So yes, that timeline was restored by going back in time and ending the apocalypse by killing Michael Langdon. So what else happened? We put some down on the list oh here. Oh God, okay, here, so we got, all right, the apocalypse was avoided. Right. All right, so Michael's killed. Yep. He's gone in this timeline. Uh, the coven's saved. Yes. The earth is saved for mm -hmm. the moment, for the time being. For the time being. Yes, all right. Myrtle isn't resurrected. Yep, she's back. Nope, nope. Rest in peace. Sorry, Myrtle. Uh, Madison, she's back in retail hell. Yep, she okay. deserves it. Okay, now here's one that's gonna piss off a few people. Yeah. The murder house has been reset. So right. Tate and Violet, still not talking. Nope. Still yeah. Not talking so to each the other return, problem. the return to Murder House episode where all that stuff went down, never, never happened. happened. So that means that um, Constance Langdon is still alive. She probably didn't commit suicide, or at least not yet. It, she probably will still go out on her own terms, right? In that house, but not with Michael's hand, right? Another sad one is Moira's still stuck in that house, right? 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 She didn't meet her mom. We don't have that scene anymore. It's beautiful here. I feel like I can finally breathe. So Queenie makes it safely to the price. I'm guessing Queenie wins the price is right. And yeah, that, remember that, that ticket's enchanted, so she probably, she gets there safely. She, she, doesn't, she doesn't get killed in the hotel. She's probably enjoying the nice beach weather down there in Venice. Okay. And she makes it to the price is right. She probably wins with the fucking enchantment on that ticket. And that should change everything from that point on. I'm okay with this. If they can go on from a sequel here, yeah, I, I would love to see where they're going. Uh, maybe we. I'll watch episodes of, of Queenie just just winning the prices right week after week. <laughs> Again, Jeff and Mud are out there somewhere just building robots and railing cocaine lines. That's it. Yep. That's fine. <laughs> now the apocalypse it looks like it's still on course here with the new kid. Yeah, give it about 10, 15 years, it'll still happen. Yep, but Mallory's there to hopefully stop it from happening. So she's gonna get tired of just time travel over every and over again. every generation of time travel, just trying to save the world. Hey, her name, the unlucky one. Oh, that's a good point, I like that. Oh, there you go. And finally, the last thing that did not happen. And probably the most important thing of the whole season. Stu was not turned into Stu. Thank God. Okay, everyone, that's it for us over here. Let us know any big questions you have on the season finale in the comment section down below. Guys, we want to thank you for watching this show with us all season long. Also, you can pick up some Stu shirts. Hey. The link is in the description down below. Thank you so much for the support. 
and let us know what other type of videos you'd like to see us do on American Horror Story. Yeah. We are open to basically anything Horror Story related. Would you like to see us break down some other seasons? You want to go back in the past? Want to time travel? Oh, God. Let's time travel. Oh, no. Let us know, guys.